This is Craig with Carshalton Advisory. In this video, we're going to prepare you for writing the Excel 2016 core exam by walking you through the practice tasks for Objective 4.1, Summarize Data Using Functions. Let's get started on Part 3. With our 4.1c workbook open, what we want to do is create a formula in cell B18 that's going to count the number of non-empty cells in our period range. So I'm going to practice my go-to by hitting Control g and I'm going to type in cell B18, which is what they've requested in the workbook. Now, I could have done that with my mouse, but I figured it was as good a time as any just to practice some of these keyboard shortcuts and keep my hand on the keyboard, which lets me work even faster than if I have to rely on the mouse. So what I need to do is create a formula, and I'm going to start with an equal sign, and I want to count. So I am going to uh, start off by typing count, and when I do that, it shows me, okay, if I count, and this is the description, it's going to count the number in this range that contain numbers. Now, the range I want is period, and it doesn't contain any numbers, so I know that's not the function that I want. In fact, it specifically says the number of non-empty cells, so it could be filled with numbers, letters, words, whatever. So I'm going to hit down arrow, and, oh, look at this. So if I use the count A formula, it counts the number of cells that are not empty. So that's exactly what I want. And I don't even have to type the A. All I have to do is make sure that the formula I want is highlighted. I'm going to hit Tab. And that tells Excel that that's the formula that I've picked. And now I'm going to use the mouse to select the number of, or select the cells that I want it to count. So the range is period. I'm going to hit Control Shift to the, uh, and the up arrow to get to the top. And then uh, while holding the shift, I'm going to hit down arrow once because I don't want the period counted, just everything underneath it. Once I've done that, I'm going to hit enter. And it is telling me that there are 16 cells in that area that are not empty. Now, our next item that we need to do is to create a formula that returns the average value in the sales range. So I'm going to right arrow once to cell C18 and I want to return an average. So I'm going to equals for a formula, AVE, and let's see what formulas I have. Uh, so I don't want deviations. I do want an average though. So after typing AVE, down arrow, I'm going to hit tab, and that calls my average formula. I'm then going to hold shift and up arrow to get to the top, and then hit enter. Once I've done that, it's provided me with the average for all the cells in the sales column, which is uh, a little bit over $412,000. Next, we're going to go up to D5, and I'll use my arrows this time, D5, uh, to create a formula that returns the lowest sales value for the fall period. So uh, lowest is smallest. And if it's smallest, I want a minimum. And so I'm going to hit equals MIN. And it tells me in the description here that it's going to return the smallest number in a set of values. So I'm going to hit minimum, now tab, and I'm going to choose my range. So I want just fall. So that's those four cells there. And it tells me that of those four options, that 300,000 is the smallest value. Now, I'm going to show you another function here uh, just to, uh, to, to help expand your abilities because, you know, by the time you've gone through and typed this, selected these four cells, you probably, uh, you know, already know what the smallest is. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I am going to do a new formula. Uh, and this one is called equals for a formula, min, and I am going to use the... Uh, the min ifs function. So this is going to return the minimum value under a specific set of conditions. So I'm going to hit tab and enter, or excuse me, just tab. And so it wants to know what my minimum range is. So the range I want to find the minimum in is column C and all of the sales values. I've excluded that average number that we've counted. I'm going to hit a comma and it's now asking for a criteria range. So I want to know what the minimum is for uh, fall. And uh, so that is given to me in the period section. 
So I'm now going to highlight the period section, which are those cells there. I'm going to hit comma again, and then it asks me for the criteria. So this is going to say, hey, tell me what you want to know uh, what the minimum is or, or from what group, what period. And so in this case, I'm going to direct it over to this blank cell A20. And once I do that, I'm going to hit close bracket. And now the formula is showing me is blank. But what I can do if I type fall in here, it's now going to show me 300,000. If I type spring, it's going to show me the smallest value for spring. Summer, 200,000. Winter, 240,000. Now, what I would typically do is I'd actually create a drop down list so that the user doesn't have to type in the name of the, the criteria that they want to find. Uh, but if you watch my uh, Excel study guide videos, uh, we'll go over how to uh, create a drop down list like that. Anyways, to finish this practice task off, let's move now to our sales by category worksheet. Once we've done that, we're going to go to cell C95, and I'm going to do that by go to C95, enter. Excuse me, let's try that with a control G and try C95. All right, so in C95, I want to calculate the sales total for each category by using a relative cell range reference. So this is pretty straightforward and similar to what we've done in the past. I'm going to hit enter. I'm going to type sum, a tab, and then I'm going to hold shift until I get to the top of the stack of items that I want to sum up. I'll hit enter. And so that has now given me a total of 595. Those are a relative range reference. And I can tell that because there are no dollar signs when I look up here in the formula bar. So next, I'm going to go to C101. I'm going to do the same thing. Oops, we'll go to sum. And this time I want those four items. Enter. Lastly, I'm going to go to 104, and it's just faster for me to arrow down. Equals sum. And I've now have sums for those three areas. Next, I want to go to C86. C86. And I want to use an absolute cell reference. Well, yes, this isn't much of a range, but uh, we'll do it anyways because they requested us. So sum tab, I'm going to select the cells that I want, which is just C85. I'm going to use F4 to make that an absolute reference and hit enter. So that wraps up all of our objectives for this part of the workbook or this part of the textbook. Thanks for watching. We'll see you with section 4.2.